We got copper prices versus copper prices. This chart shows copper prices in the Chilean peso, which is that white line, and the blue line, which is U.S. copper prices. The more the currency sinks, the higher prices go in local currency terms. How much more juice and upside do we have in local copper prices in Chile? Well, that's a great question. I mean, certainly what we've seen already is a massive increase in local currency prices. They're up, even though the uh, Chilean peso has appreciated recently, they're up around 15% uh, in local currency terms since the middle of this year. And that is probably going to result in, um, you know, assuming that cost inflation doesn't come through in Chile, that that could be incremental margins for domestic producers in the order of $4 billion. Uh, in terms of the outlook, it's pretty tough to say um, what's going to happen. It's been very, very volatile on the, on the currency side. Uh, so when you talk about margins, I mean, if I'm going to make a better margin as a producer, I'm going to want to go invest more money and then produce more. Is that going to be uh, sort of an overhang here for copper? Does that happen? Yeah, we've done a lot of thinking about this. It's a, I mean, it's a tough question. But the answer that we, we've come up with is, is that we don't think so. Um, you know, essentially for the next 12 months or so, um, you're going to have a lot of uh, concern and doubt and question marks about what's going to be in the potential new constitution. Uh, and in the build-up to that, you're probably not going to have uh, significant capex uh, over and above what's already been committed in Chile, regardless of the potential potentially strong margins resulting from the recent currency depreciation. And this just comes on sort of uh, a downturn in CapEx anyway from 2012 to 2017. We have a chart actually from your note that shows uh, production in sort of the CapEx that's not been invested. Uh, where's my big supply crunch and when does it happen and what might resolve it? Actually the big supply crunch is happening now. It's been happening this year and it's going to continue to happen next year. Um, so through 2020 we think that uh, the fact that CapEx has collapsed by an amount uh, only equaled 20 years ago. So it's the second, e roughly equally the biggest collapse in CapEx that we've seen in copper uh, over the past 20 years and, and if not ever. Uh, that is driving down copper mine supply last year and we'll probably have no growth next year. Beyond that it's a little bit more difficult but the next couple of years, um, this year, next year and potentially the year after, Lack of copper mine supply means that copper is probably going to be heavily leveraged to any demand uptick. Uh, so what can we expect for next year in terms of prices? Well, uh, unfortunately, a lot of that is going to depend on the trade war. Our own view is by the middle of next year, copper will be getting up to about $6,500, so more than 10% upside from the current price. But implicit in that, we have the phase one deal happening, some hope of a phase two deal happening, and a uh, continued gradual and modest Chinese easing, which should be more than enough to see copper register about a 200,000 tonne deficit, have margins improve, have sentiment improve, positioning improve, and that's what gets you to 6,500.